Repentance. First lesson, Luke 5, 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Second lesson, Luke 15, 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Golden text, Matthew 11, 20 through 21. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Charzin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Can you not realize the mind of the charity? You argue that you cannot discern the mind of another. I say, you can. He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. His contention is that after healing any person of his sickness, he should forsake sin. When he gives them bread and preaches the word of God to them, they should forsake sins. Why he preached the word of God and healed people free of charge and did many mighty works was to induce them to repent and forsake sins. Peculiar Characteristics of Human Beings It is said that two things take a bird to the stream, to bath and to drink. If somebody comes to your house, there is a reason for his coming. He expects something from you. We all have our own weaknesses. You can curse someone and he does not get angry because that is not his weak point. You can call someone a thief and he will not retort. You say that he is a good man, but he is not a good man. He has his own weak point. There is something that will cause him to flare up the moment you prick him. His source of anger may arise when somebody speaks evil about his father or his mother. Others are angry when you say they are thieves. Others are ready to forgive whoever owes them money. But he will tell you that any day that somebody meddles with his wife, he will terminate the person's life. And so if you owe him and he does not bother you, you will say that he is a very good man. I am telling you that he is not. If you go and touch his wife, he will break his head for you. Men's Ignorance of God's Requirements It is the same thing with God. God desires that we should repent. When God feeds us, protects us, heals us, he is doing this because he wants to induce us to forsake sins. Do you not see that all those who argue that God does not require anything from them are lying. God wants many things from us. God is not a fool to heal us free of charge, feed us, and do many good works for us. He is expecting certain things from us. If somebody tells you that he is doing a certain thing for you gratis, he is telling a lie. There is something he expects. Our problem is that we do not know what God requires from us. That is why after healing our sickness, we go back to commit sin. He saves us, but we will continue in sin. Upon all the good things that God has bestowed on us, we still indulge in sin. God's Inducement Who told you that God does not require anything from us? He said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. The reason he loves sinners is that sinners may repent. Why he tolerates us and bestows good things on us is that we may repent because he does not rejoice over the death of the wicked. Sometimes he reveals himself to you. Sometimes he speaks to you. Sometimes he gives you the ability. At other times, he bestows good things on you. He does all these things so that you may repent. He heals us free of charge. He takes all our problems, protects us, reveals himself to us, converses with us, and does everything to us so that we may repent. For all the good things God does for us, he expects this one thing, that we should forsake sins. God requires that we should abstain from sins. 
Let no person again express that God does not require anything from us because this is not true. If he did not require anything from us, why would he give us life, husband, wife, money, children, and all the good things of life? Have you ever seen a bird attracted to an unripe palm fruit? Why we offend God every second is that we do not know his mind. Every day you complain that you do not know what you can do for God. God wants you to forsake sins. God requires neither gold, nor money, nor food, nor houses, but he wants you to repent and forsake sins. That is all God requires from us. Why God reveals himself to you in the dream, in the world, speaks with you and does many things for you is that you may forsake sins. Man only lacks righteousness. If after God has revealed himself to you, has healed your sickness, has solved all your problems and has taken away your difficulties and you refuse to forsake sins, your last state will be worse than the beginning. There is nothing that man lacks except righteousness. The only good that you can do to your fellow man is to make him forsake sin. Giving money, house, or motor car to someone does not save him. The only good that he can profit from you is to make him refrain from sin. Whoever converts a sinner from his evil way has saved his soul and will save himself. If somebody is a drunkard and you stop him from drinking, you have done a great thing for him because you have saved his soul. If someone is a sorcerer or a necromancer and you remove him from these evil practices, you have saved his soul. If you convert a fornicator from his evil ways, you have saved his soul and you have done a very useful thing to him. No matter how much money you give to God, no matter how much food you present to him, no matter the amount or the number of children you have, these do not please God. What pleases God is that you should forsake sins and follow him. If you have a child and you name him after God, you call her Mary. This does not please God. All that God wants is that you should forsake sins. If you like to pay your tithe in the millions, if you like to build houses from here to London and surrender them to God, these acts do not please God. Repent and forsake sins because this is what is pleasing to God. Whoever wants to please God should forsake sins. The Purpose of the Lord's Visitation Why did our Lord Jesus Christ come down to earth? He came so that we might forsake sins. God wanted to destroy the world because of sin, but Christ volunteered to come and shed his blood so that we may repent. And so whoever does not repent has a double punishment because you have crucified Christ the second time and exposed him to an open shame. That is why we told them, if I have not done these mighty works in your midst, you would have an excuse. But now that I have showed all these mighty works in your midst, you have no defense to make. If God reveals himself to you, he does it so that you may forsake sin. If you are sick and God heals you, he does it so that you may forsake sin. If you sing and dance to God, but what God wants is that you should forsake sin. Remember the blind man whose eyes he opened. When he found him again in the temple, he told him, See, you are now whole. Sin no more. Least worse things come unto thee. God's only requirement of man. It is double punishment for whoever God has saved and goes back to indulge himself in sin. There is no point coming to confess that you have committed fornication, theft, anger, falsehood, and have indulged in the preparations of concoctions because God has warned you to refrain from these sins and he does not expect you to go back to them. You argue that you do not know what God requires of you, but right now, do you not know what he requires of you? He wants you to refrain from sin. From the beginning of the world, Noah preached about repentance. Christ preached on it. All the prophets preached that people should repent and forsake sin. In your case, it is the quest for money, for food, for husband, for wives, for houses, for power, and for all mundane things. But God wants only one thing. It is that we should forsake sin. Fortunately, all that we ask of God, he does it for us. Unfortunately, the one thing God has asked of us to do, 
We refuse. It is a pitiful thing that the entire world should deny God for the single request which he makes to us. God does not require money or house or car from us. All that he requires of us is that we should abstain from sin. Put this injunction to test right from this night. Refrain from sin and see if God will not exalt you and bestow every good thing unto you. And there will be great joy in heaven. Brethren, we do not want to be tedious with you because this is a very short gospel, but weighty. Let our first lesson be read. First lesson, Luke 5, 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Have you heard that? My friend, have you repented? Sinners, have you repented? Visionaries, charm remover, singer, preacher, have you repented? For 20 years now you are singing and dancing to your God, but have you repented? Because that is the only thing God requires from you. There is joy in heaven over all repented sinners. Right from the day you commit sin, you are lost. You have no fellowship with God and you are dead. All sinners have their names in the book of death. God wants your name to be removed from the book of death into the book of life. When you repent and forsake sin, God will be happy with you. All those who commit sin are not the children of God. God has no business with them. His only business is with those who obey him and forsake sin. He says that he is not God of the dead, but of the living. He is not God of the wicked, but of the righteous. And so whenever you repent from your sins and do good, there is great joy in heaven. God can give the whole world to you out of joy. He does not require anything from us than for us to abstain from sin. I always feel sorry when I hear someone saying that God loves him and yet continues to sin. God loves you and you are still telling lies. You are drinking. You are indulging in the preparation of concoction and other sins. Is that how you are repaying him? God gives you promotion at your place of work and you buy drinks and invite people to celebrate with you. You spend the money derived from the promotion to buy different things. You commit acts which do not give glory to God. Is that how you are repaying God? Can you not see that until now, even you in brotherhood do not know what God requires of you? Upon all the love you have for God, if you were to know what God loves, I do not think that you would commit sin. I believe that right from this night, none of you will commit sin again since you love God. It is better to hearken unto God than unto men. There is great joy in heaven. What God wishes to do this year for his children who refrain from sin is very great. Do you not realize how God loves brotherhood? Brotherhood does not do anything. It is where you do not commit sin and you love every person. That is all that God requires from you. Do not pour libations. Do not indulge in diabology. Do not drink. That is why God has highly exalted brotherhood. That is why when the rulers commanded Peter and John not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus, Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God. If somebody pleads with you to tell a lie and gives you one million dollars, of what value is it if you offend God and have destroyed your soul and are separated from God? If somebody buys a motor car for you or builds a house for you because he has committed fornication with you, of what use is that house or motor car since your soul has already perished? Emulate Joseph. Look at Joseph. When his master's wife asked him to lie with her, Joseph said to her, There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Thus thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? The moment you know what God loves and what he hates, you are free. Upon the thousands of years you have been on earth, you have been roaming about like sheep without a shepherd. You say that you do not know what God loves and you do not know what he hates. Sunday night is always a night for wonderful sermons. 
I believe that I will receive this gospel tomorrow so that it may be made into a pamphlet and distributed to the whole world to enable them to know what God requires of them. Virgins in the kingdom of God. Whenever we steal or tell lies or fornicate or drink, indulge in the preparation of concoction or commit sin, there is great sorrow in heaven. But whenever we repent and forsake sin, there is great joy in heaven. When many people hear that we are looking for virgins, they begin to ask what the virgins are coming to do because they have no money. Even the virgins do not know the important thing they have done. But I'm telling you that they have done a great thing in the sight of God. There is great joy in heaven over one virgin who surrenders himself to God. Even you do not know what a virgin is. Upon all the love you have for God, if you were to know what a virgin is before God, you would become a virgin overnight. The eunuchs. There are eunuchs who are born eunuchs. There are other eunuchs who are made eunuchs by man. And there are other eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of God. That is why he says that we should repent. Repentance implies surrendering yourself completely. Why we do this is that he may take us unto himself and through us to save the entire world. We are co-laborers with God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. Do not allow any person to deceive you that there is anything pleasing to God apart from our abstinence from sin. David was a rich man and he decided that he was going to build a house for God. God told him not to build him a house. His hands were soiled. God does not accept the sacrifice of the wicked. He has no business with sin. If you are left with just one iota of sin, God has no business with you. The moment you commit sin and call upon God, he does not listen to you. If you dance, God has no pleasure in it. What he wants is that you should forsake sins. The world is to be pitied because you do not know what your father hates and what he loves. What you are hearing now is the only thing God loves. If you want to see the glory of God in you and around you, abstain from sin. Abstain from all appearances of evil. There is great joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and forsakes sin. Do not complain that you have no money and no sotain to wear to church. These are nothing before God. Do not complain that your mates all have gotten children, own houses, and bought cars. These things are nothing before God. The only thing that God requires of us is that we forsake sin. If you build houses from here to Africa and overlay them with gold, you seek food for everyone. God has no business with any of these things. Even if you are as many as the sands on the seashore, no matter how well you can speak the English language, God does not rejoice in these. What it requires is that you forsake sin. All those who commit sin are the lost sheep. They are all a loss to God. Christ shed his blood so that we may be saved, but we made his blood of none effect. We'll call on Jesus, but he has no meaning on our lives. Building costly houses and decorating them with gold is meaningless. The only thing that God requires of each of us is that we forsake sin. That is the only thing that pleases God. That is why Paul said, what things were gained to me? I count them but loss that I may gain the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. God hates what evil is and loves what is good. When Christ did not drink the cup of woe and sins of the world, no one arrested him because God was always with him. Immediately he drank of that cup, God forsook him. They spat on him. They slapped him and asked him to mention who had slapped him, but he could not do nothing. That was why... When he was crucified, he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If it were not that he had carried upon himself our own sins, who would have arrested him? He would be moving about without any person touching him. That is why he says you should not fear that which can kill flesh only, but cannot kill the soul. What can kill both the body and the soul? It is sin. Let our second lesson be read so that when you complain about the number of years you have been in the brotherhood, you have tried to forsake sins without success. I am telling you that you have not made any effort 
and you do not know what God loves. Second lesson, Luke 15, 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just person which need no repentance. Many of us think that during any lunching here, if you do not give a thousand dollars, you are not a man of God, that you will be laughed at when you give fifty dollars. You are laughing at yourself. God has no concern with that. He wants every person to refrain from sin. Many of us refuse to come for worship because we do not have the white sultane. What is the white sultane before God? The moment you forsake sins, you have got the white sultane. Repentance subsumes joy. When you abstain from sins, God will clothe you with righteousness. Have you not seen how there is great joy in heaven? The whole world is shaking because of brotherhood. You know that it was because of the sin of Adam that he was driven out of the Garden of Eden. If they did not commit sin, they would have remained still in the Garden, and there was neither hunger nor sickness nor problems of any kind. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all me unto justification of life. The lost Eden has now been regained. You look at it as insignificant, but you do not know that you have attained the position which Adam fell from. Right now, all the angels bow before you. The joy that is in heaven concerning this glory is very great. What is the cause of the joy? It is because of one sinner who repents. But now we have more than one sinner who has repented. Some are vegetarians and have forsaken every sin. When you complain that you have nothing, he does not require anything from you. The moment you forsake sin, that is all. In the past time, you did not know what is sin. All the churches in the world do not know what is sin. But today, when you commit sin, you know that you have committed sin. And whenever you ask God for forgiveness, he forgives you. How many sinners have repented? You are aware that in brotherhood, money is nothing. Children are nothing. Houses are nothing. The important thing here is for you to refrain from sin because if you continue to sin, you are lost. All those who commit sin are under debt. That is why it is said that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. Can you not realize that there is great joy in heaven over one sinner who repents? But here is a situation. Very many sinners have repented, and so there is great joy indeed in heaven. It is said that heaven shall rejoice when one sinner repents and follows God. Go and sing this song to the entire world because Satan has vowed that Christ will not have any followers. But right now the children of God have filled the entire world. The Rapid Growth of Brotherhood People are mesmerized at the growth of brotherhood. Every day, brotherhood continues to soar unto greater heights, and it is not yet reached its zenith. Brotherhood will be so great that you will not hear of any other thing, because there is great joy in heaven. Man did not hope that he will return to Eden. Right now, you are in the Eden, and the angels are worshiping you. Trees, death, whites, Blacks, and even the creation is under your feet. No person had hoped that Adam would ever regain his lost glory again. Fortunately, he has been restored to his first position. The animal that belongs to the king is still for the king. Man has been seated on that throne of glory again. Can you realize or see the cause of this joy? Have you ever seen a government without an army and it survives? Have you heard that? When God brings in the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. Right now, all the angels who are in heaven and on earth are worshiping him. There is nothing in brotherhood other than for you to forsake sin. That is why you should be careful that you do not commit any sin. Do not pour libation. All that you are told not to do, refrain from them. The world will lack food and clothing. There will be sickness and deaths. 
but nothing will happen to brotherhood. Every day, food, wealth, health, joy, peace, and glory will flourish here. Always seek to please God. I purposely used to call convert to give a testimony so that you may know the sufferings that is in the world. If you know what transpires in the world for one day, you would realize that the world is to be pitied. Fire is burning them every day and they are in real hell. Right from now, rather than for you to go and offend God, offend man. Because if you offend God, you are finished. Do not live to please yourself and do not live to please any other person. Live to please God and you will have no problems. All those whom God has saved and they refuse to repent, their punishment has neither beginning nor end. It is eternal. That is why the scriptures say that whoever has tested the goodness of this glory and goes back to defile himself in the world, his last state is worse than the first. It were better for you not to have seen this kingdom at all than after coming to see this kingdom, you go back into the world. Brethren, let the golden text be read. Listen attentively so that you may realize that all what we preached to you from Monday to Sunday is for you to refrain from sin, because the moment you forsake sins, you have no problems again. Golden Text, Matthew eleven twenty through 22 Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Shorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Have you not seen that? When you complain that, when you first went into brotherhood, your faith was very strong. What has happened now? Have you not gone back to commit fornication and drink and defile yourself? That is the statement that was made to that man. Now you are made whole. Sin no more, least worse things befall you. When God has saved any person and he goes back to commit sin, his punishment is double. Why many people lack peace? That is what awaits all those to whom God has revealed himself and has changed them, but they become again entangled in sin. That is why you can go to somebody's house and find food, money, cars, but there is no peace. He is complaining of trouble from witches and enemies. No enemy or witch is troubling you. What is troubling you is your own sin because you are under a cure. Why should you regard God as prayers? Why should you regard God as a sorcerer? Why should you regard God as a preacher? Is that not an insult? Tomorrow you assert that God should pray for you so that you may have money. The next day you send a letter to God so that he may take away your court case or so that you may have children and motor cars. When did this insult begin? Repent and be saved. Have you not heard the golden text? Our Lord Jesus Christ pronounced curses on those two cities, which had done mighty works, but they refused to repent. Do you not then understand the first lesson which says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Again, there is great joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than the ninety-nine who have no need for repentance. All those whom God has saved and yet they continue in sin are under a cure forever because they have crucified Christ the second time and have exposed him to an open shame. The only thing that lies before us is for us to abstain from sin and follow him. If we were to forsake sins, we would not lack anything. There would be no shame or disgrace for us. There would be no evil afflicting us. Try it and see. The moment you repent and forsake sin, wealth, food, money, clothes, everything will be flowing to you because he owns everything. Brethren, one stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. He who has ears, let him hear. May God bless his words. Amen. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, delivered by leader and teacher, Alumba Alumba Abu. You're the lamb that was slain on the cross for man. You're the one that was worthy to open the sea. 
came to save mankind from death to life. You're the one who sits on the throne of God, O Lumba. So I lift my heart, I lift my voice and cry, you are worthy and cry, you are
Oh. Uh-huh.